Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Wednesday, July 28th. My name is Alana Brown, and I'm here with you from Neighbors Group and Solo401k.com. Today is our webinar Wednesday series. We will be going over prohibited transactions. Like usual, let me know over here. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Today, while we're going through the presentation, if you have any questions about prohibited transactions, just go ahead and ask them down there somewhere. It should say, ask a question. Also, the three different ways to get support from us, we always like to review, is our network, solo401k.net. It's a great place to ask questions, gain knowledge, link up with like-minded investors, and also find this webinar later. You can find that there and all other webinars that we do. The second way is our website, solo401k.com. It's like having your own personal library, find great tools and all other kinds of great education about your solo 401k. And the last way is our knowledge base, which is support solo401k.com. You'll find step-by-step -step guides, great resources. Type in any kind of keyword, and we probably have something there that is very useful. All of these resources are available 24-7. We may not be available 24-7. We're here about, you know, Monday through Friday, 7 to 5 Pacific time. We are here and happy to help you. If it's outside those hours, check out those resources. Super, super, super helpful. And of course, you could always email us at support at solo401k.com. Wonderful. It looks like, hi, Jim. Kim, thank you. Tim, you're doing a test. Hopefully your test is working. Okay, well, let's jump in. Prohibited transactions. Know the rules. Quick disclaimer. We always like to say this. We're not the replacements for your CPAs, your tax advisors, your legal counsel, especially when it comes to something like this. It's really important to involve your legal counsel if you're not sure if you should be investing in a certain deal or with a certain person, you do want to reach out. A little bit about us. We launched the IRA LLC in 2003 and the solo401k.com in 2006. So we've been doing this for a long time. One of the greatest aspects is that every team member here has their own self-directed retirement account. We all have our own checkbook control plans. We've been through the process. We know how to explain it. We can vouch for this process. It just makes it really great to be able to connect with you guys as you're going through it. We work closely with the IRS, of course. Your plan documents are always going to be up to date. So what is a prohibited transaction? So it's a transaction that is disallowed in the solo 401k and the self-directed IRA. So you know, certain deals cannot go on between your retirement plan and certain people as well. There's a whole list of disqualified persons. And there are certain assets that are prohibited from being purchased with retirement funds. All of this can be found in the, found in the Internal Revenue Code section 4975. All of these prohibited transactions, they apply to both the solo 401k and the IRA. You can find this information directly on the IRS website.
So the two big topics that we'll be discussing are what assets are prohibited and who is your 401k prohibited from transacting with? Collectibles, they are all prohibited assets. So take a look at this list. You cannot use your solo 401k or IRA funds to purchase any of the following. So also it's important when you are purchasing precious metals, they're not collectible coins. The IRS has guidelines for things like that. Artwork, you would think that maybe that would be a great investment. You cannot purchase that with 401k funds. Disqualified persons. This is a really important list. You, you yourself, you are disqualified from transacting with your 401k funds. You're not allowed to sell yourself, you know, one of your properties that are in your 401k to you personally. And vice versa. You know, we get that question a lot like, uh, can I put my primary home in my 401k? Can I put other properties that I already own into my 401k? You are disqualified. So we're going to go over details on all of this. Great examples. So your spouse, that's why also having your spouse on your plan is really important because then you guys can invest together. <clears throat> So take note of this list, your lineal ascendants, lineal descendants. What's interesting is your mother and father-in-law is actually okay. Here's some more um, disqualified persons. So a corporation that is 50% or more directly or indirectly owned by yourself, or your spouse or anyone on that list that you just looked at, that's disqualified. As well as an officer, director, someone that's 10% or more owner of a highly compensated employee of the corporation. And then a 10% or more partner or joint venture of the corporation. Here are some examples. Let's say you own a construction firm. That firm is prohibited from working on your 401k owned properties. I know it sounds like a great idea. Why not? You have the tools, you have the people. You cannot, you cannot work on your own 401k properties. How about your father is a realtor and wants to be the agent for your solo 401k property? Your father is prohibited from being that agent. He's on that list. He's one of the disqualified people. So he cannot be the agent. I know it would be great to give him the commission. You love your dad, but that's a no-no. Your spouse owns a rental property. She wants to sell. You're prohibited from purchasing these properties with your solo 401k funds. You own a rental property in your solo 401k. You are prohibited from renting them to your children. They are part of your lineal descendants. So you cannot do that. Okay, this is a great list too. Who's not disqualified? So like I said before, the mother and the father-in-laws Brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, children that were not legally adopted, and non-blood related family friends. Also, if you have owned less than 10% of a company that you work for, you may be able to invest in that company. General rule of thumb, you know, if you own over 50% of that company, red light, don't invest. You know, be cautious if you own 10% to 49%. You definitely want to talk to your legal counsel about that. Typically, that's not allowed. 
you probably can invest in a company you own less than 10%. But of course, any time you have some kind of part ownership, even if it's under 10%, you do want to double check. Check. You know, this is just it's a little bit of a gray area. You do you want to talk to a lawyer, you know, get the A-OK -okay from them. So you don't have to worry about any possible consequences. We're going to go over the consequences and they're steep. So here are the common types of prohibited transactions. Self-dealing, direct prohibited transactions, and a conflict of interest transactions. What is self-dealing? So when a fiduciary, which is you, or maybe your spouse, so it's who's on the plan, acts in his own best interest in a transaction. If you, a family member, or, per, or your business personally benefits from the investment, then you are self-dealing. So remember, the objective of the 401k investments is to grow your 401k assets. It's not to benefit you personally. Of course, you're going to benefit down the road. So don't jeopardize any of that. Follow these rules. Let's go over an example. So we have Billy. He is a real estate agent. He also has a solo 401k for his real estate business. Awesome. So Billy wants to sell a property he owns personally to his solo 401k. He thinks to himself, I should be the real estate agent on this deal. Then I won't have to pay commissions to someone else and I can make money on the deal. But Billy thinks that this does sound too good to be true. So he does the right thing and he consults with his CPA. And of course, his CPA lets him down and lets him know that this is considered self-dealing. So Billy would be personally benefiting from the sale of his solo 401k property. So remember, avoid self-dealing. You personally cannot make money off of your 401k transactions. Direct prohibited transactions. So there are four types, and this is all mapped out with the IRS. The first one, the sale or exchange or leasing of any property between a plan and a disqualified person. So fairly straightforward. So you'll never want to buy or sell assets directly to your solo 401k or IRA, just like in the example with Billy, or vice versa. Remember that disqualified persons list, that applies here too. So you're not buying or selling with anyone that's on that list as well. It's not just you. It's everyone that's on that disqualified person's list. So John, he decides to rent the property owned by his solo 401k to his parents. Not allowed. Lenny buys shares of his son's business with his solo 401k funds. Problems there. Jeanette and her family rent their checkbook IRA-owned Airbnb property to themselves for the weekend. Sounds like a great idea. They want to be on the beach and live in their own property. That's not allowed. And Taylor sells her solo 401k property to her son, Enzo. He is a part of her lineal descendants, so Enzo is prohibited So just remember, you don't want to rent any of your properties to your family members. It's just, it's not worth that risk at all. And you'll see how much exactly, or pretty close to what it may cost you, you and that other person involved. The next one, lending of money or other extension of credit 
between a plan and a disqualified person. So you don't want to loan money directly from your IRA or your 401k plan. So anyone that's on that list can never borrow or lend money to or from. Let's look at some examples. We have Sandeep. He personally guarantees a property he wants to purchase with his solo 401k funds. Not allowed. Carol lends her son $50,000 from her IRA. These are all not allowed within your retirement accounts. Jose, he wants to lend his business $25,000 directly from the solo 401k. Still not allowed. Loretta lends herself funds from her solo 401k to pay off her car. So she can't do it directly. There is a way she can. And we'll talk about that later. It's not going to be directly. Something that we've talked about before. So let's go back to Sandeep. He personally guaranteed a property that he wanted to purchase with his solo 401k funds. You never, ever want to sign a personal guarantee on a loan for your 401k or your IRA. The only kind of loan that you want is a non-recourse loan. We've done trainings in the past. You could probably find that, or I know you can find that at solo401k.net in the event section, but we'll also most likely do another training here soon. The third one, furnishing of goods, services, or facilities between a plan and a disqualified person. So this can get a little bit trickier. Um, so this involves you or a disqualified person providing services to your IRA or your 401k. So it doesn't matter, you know, how big or small it is, you know, working on a sink or using, you know, your son's construction company. It doesn't matter. It's still prohibited. So it's known as sweat equity. Remember, you're not allowed to work on the property. You're not the one that's gonna fix that plumbing problem. Maybe you know how to do it and it's gonna take you five minutes. Don't do it. You always wanna hire an unrelated third party to do that work. Let's go through some more examples. I've got so many examples today. We find that this just makes it really get in here solidifies everything. So Charlie buys a fixer upper with his solo 401k funds and he decides to do the construction himself on the property. Even though Charlie's great at construction, he can't do it. He wants to hire out. Jake buys a building with his solo 401k funds and hires his daughter to complete the renovations. You guys all know now his daughter is prohibited. So this does not work. Steve is ready to sell his IRA owns property and hires his son to be the real estate agent on the deal. And Alex hires his mother's accounting firm to do the books for his 401k plan. And he pays her with 401k funds. These are all not allowed. And the fourth one, transfer to or use by or for the benefit of a disqualified person of the income or assets of a plan. So similar to self-dealing, you know, the IRS doesn't want you to personally benefit from the plan. You know, your job as the plan fiduciary is to be good stewards of your wealth. So you cannot use these funds to line your pockets. Jane owns a rental property with her solo 401k funds. She is low on cash to pay her bills and decides to use the solo 401k rental income as personal funds. Remember guys, when you have a property owned by your solo 401k, the funds are flowing in and out of your trust checking account or your brokerage account. They're not flowing into your personal account. That rent check has always got to go into your trust accounts and it's not going into your personal funds. 
Tim pays himself a management fee from the solo 401k for taking care of his solo 401k rental properties. You know, we get this question a lot. So, you know, there's no dumb question out there. You just, you never know, but it's not allowed. You know, you think that you can do that. You're working so hard on these properties, but you cannot pay yourself, but you're not working too hard on those properties. Maybe you're just collecting those rents. You're finding the properties, but you're not working on them physically. Adam gives his son 50% of the rental income he's receiving from his IRA owns property. Adam, that's really nice thought, but it's not allowed. There's something called conflict of interest transactions. So this occurs when there is some kind of conflict of interest between you and your 401k plan. So think of it like this, you know, the litmus test. Would this deal work if your IRA or 401k wasn't involved? Lauren loans 401k funds to a business she works for. And then she gets a promotion specifically because her 401k lent these funds to the company. There's the conflict. You know, if she didn't lend those funds, she would not have gotten that promotion. That is a conflict of interest. Then there's Tim. He invests his checkbook IRA to a hedge fund that he manages. The total amount of the money in the fund goes up and he gets a bonus. Because his IRA directly made the total assets of the funds go up and is compensated, is tied, his compensation is tied to the total assets, there's the conflict. You know, if he didn't have those funds in his hedge and his hedge fund didn't go up, he would not have gotten that bonus. So there's that conflict. Since we all love cryptocurrency, let's talk about prohibited transactions in crypto. We get these questions all the time. They're all such good questions. So transferring non-retirement owned crypto holdings into a solo 401k or IRA is prohibited. So Raquel, she purchased Bitcoin and Ethereum prior to opening up her solo 401k. She now wants to transfer these assets into her solo 401k so she can grow the gains on her crypto tax deferred. Sounds like a great idea, but that's not allowed. Remember, when you already purchase assets with personal funds, they are personal funds. You can't recategorize that as retirement funds. Another big one. So making contributions to an IRA or 401k in crypto is prohibited. You know, maybe one day that'll change. You never know. But right now you cannot make your new contributions in crypto. It's got to be USD. Even if Raquel used business funds to purchase that crypto originally, it's still not allowed. Depositing 401k money into your personal crypto account because the exchange is taking forever to open the account for your solo 401k is prohibited. So, you know, sometimes these exchanges can take a little bit of time, especially when all of a sudden Bitcoin is on its way up. You can't just use your personal account. I know a lot of us have personal accounts. They're open already. You know, you want to jump in and you want to get that tax deferment. You want that growth to grow a tax, maybe tax free. You can't use your personal account. No, 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 no. You know, just like how we said, I said earlier, you know, we all have our own solo 401ks. We've all opened up our own exchanges. You know, we've been through the experience, you know, um, Kraken, Gemini, they're getting these accounts open pretty fast. Coinbase Prime is taking a little bit of time. So if you need to jump in fast, Go with an exchange that we've seen, you know, get these accounts open fast. So there are other options. Do not use your personal account. 
remember, we'll just keep reiterating it. You need to use your designated account. Storing crypto in the same account on a hardware wallet as non-retirement crypto is prohibited. So a bit of a, you know, complex task, moving your funds onto that hard wallet. You always want to have a separate account or a sub account. Don't mix those personal funds, that personal crypto. You may want to think about having a whole other separate physical hard wallet instead. So you will not mess this up. So why not spend an extra few bucks, get a separate wallet. Having your 401k buy or sell crypto to any disqualified person. You guys know the list. Larissa wants to sell some of her solo 401k owned Bitcoin to her son. He is a disqualified person. It's not allowed. So remember, everyone on that list, it applies to crypto as well. It applies to everything in your solo 401k, all of your investments. Investing in an NFT, a non-fungible token, it's not allowed. So that's actually considered a collectible. So we just had this question recently. So this is a good one. So an NFT is a collectible, which means it's prohibited because it's a prohibited asset. So it is expensive when you break the rules, not just to you, but to anyone that's involved. Your solo 401k or IRA will pay federal taxes and penalties. Anyone involved is subjected to these penalties. According to the IRS, a disqualified person must pay an initial tax on a prohibited transaction of 15% of the amount involved for each year or part of a year in the taxable period. If a disqualified person does not correct the transaction within the taxable period, there's an additional tax of 100% of the amount involved. John decides to rent the property owned by his solo 401k to his parents. You guys all know that this isn't allowed. His parents pay his 401k trust $2,000 a month for one year. John hired a CPA who informed him that he has committed a prohibited transaction. So John's 401k trust received a total of $24,000 from his parents in rental income. So now John owes taxes on $3,600. We got that number by doing 15% of $24,000. And unfortunately, his parents have to pay that as well. But the good news is John corrected it and he avoided the 100% possible taxation. Taylor sold her house to her son, Enzo. This house was one of her solo 401k properties. Taylor's solo 401k trust profited $30,000 from the sale. As we know, Enzo being her son is a disqualified person, which means this is a prohibited transaction. Taylor thinks she can get away with not paying the penalties. She takes that IRS letter and she throws it into the garbage. Two years later, Taylor receives a second IRS letter. Now she owes 100% tax on the profit made by the sale of the house. So Taylor has to report $30,000 as earned income on her taxes. And guess what? So does Enzo. So you're not, you're not benefiting yourself by doing this. Can this be corrected? Possibly. 
You want to talk to your legal counsel or your CPA as soon as possible. You want to avoid that 100% taxation. So typically you can undo this. If you undo the prohibited transaction in the same tax period, you may be able to avoid this. So the rules for correcting a prohibited transaction are more forgiving in a solo 401k, but IRAs are not the same. You may have to distribute the entire IRA. That's everything that's in your IRA. It is not just the deal that you did. So for all you self-directed IRA people out there, you do not want to do any of this for sure. Neither do you solo 401k people. So John, he has an IRA. He hired his son-in-law to be the general contractor on the repairs needed for his new IRA owns rental property. John's son-in-law gave him a great deal. Materials only, no labor charge. So John was able to save a lot of money on the rehab. John has $950,000 total in his IRA. The rental property costs about $300,000, including the material for the rehab. John completes the rehab, rents the property, and begins collecting rent checks. Everything is going just great for the next three years. Then John is selected for a random compliance check by the IRS. At first, John thinks nothing of it because you know what? He's been a great record keeper of the rental income. He never used the rent personally. He's paid property taxes. He feels like he has done everything right. Unfortunately, the IRS digs in deep and he finds out, they find out that John hired his son-in-law to complete the rehab. So he has committed a prohibited transaction and the IRS levies a fine and penalty. So John has to distribute the entire $950,000, not just that $300,000. So this means a few things. So he's adding $950,000 to his taxable income. And now, you know, none of these funds get to grow tax deferred. That 950 that he worked so hard to get into that IRA is now personal funds. So he's not getting, you know, all the great benefits of having retirement funds. Okay. So what would happen if John did the same thing with the solo 401k? So remember there was $300,000 was the affected amount involved, which means that John would need to pay, would need to report, excuse me, $45,000 we got this by doing $300,000 times the 15% on his, so he's got to report $45,000 on his taxes as earned income for the next three years. So why for the three years? Because that's how long it took to correct the deal. John's son-in-law is also subjected to the same penalties. So they're steep penalties, obviously very steep for the IRA and very steep for the solo 401k. So avoid a prohibited transaction. If you need funds from your IRA, there's only one way to get funds. It's from a distribution. With your solo 401k, you can take a participant loan. We just did a great webinar on that a few weeks ago. So if you you know, you want to commit a prohibited transaction. I'm sure no one really wants to commit one, but you know, if you're strapped for cash, if one of your kids need money, maybe you need to pay some bills, you need funds, take the participant loan. Don't take it directly from your solo 401k. So the maximum loan amount is 50% of your vested balance or $50,000, whichever is less. The participant loan is tax-free, so it's great. 
It's a temporary withdrawal from your retirement funds. It's not a taxable distribution. You put that money back, you're going to keep that as retirement funds. So this is just, it's a great way to access funds. If you, you're, you know, you're in need of funds, you don't need to distribute and pay the taxes. You don't need to do a prohibited transaction. Take the participant loan. Here are different ways that uh, people may use this. You know, paying down some debt or bills. Some people have very high interest rates on certain things. Pay it off. You know, take your participant loan, pay it off. And then you're just paying yourself back the interest. Why not pay yourself the interest back instead of some bank? Maybe you need seed capital for your business. Primary residence mortgage payment. If you want to flip a property, maybe you want an RV or a boat. I mean, you can use this money for anything. So a few, you know, common questions. Can I vacation in my rental property when no one's using it? What if I pay the fair market value for rent? You would think that this is okay. You know, you're still paying. No one's you know, using it, but you can't do that. Remember, you are, you know, you can't self-deal. You can't be involved in a direct prohibited transaction. Can I be the realtor for my solo 401k property? No self-dealing. You cannot benefit from this personally. Can I be the handyman for my solo 401k property? You know, it's a great way to cut the costs. Re increase the return on investments. It all sounds great in here, but you can't, you know, even though it's not going to, you know, you know how to fix the fridge, you know how to fix the roof. You need to hire that third party. Can I pay myself a salary from my solo 401k? We know you're working hard, figuring out what to invest in and being a good plan administrator and doing all these great things. You can't pay yourself. You do not want to do that. And of course, can I invest solo 401k direct funds directly in my own business? Remember, your business is disqualified. You do not want to lend your business money. Take that participant loan. If you need some seed money or you just, you know, business is a little tough this year, take out that participant loan. Do not commit a prohibited transaction. Little recap. If your IRA or solo 401k is invested in a deal, you personally are not. And you're not doing any deals with anyone that's on that list. And collectibles are considered a prohibited asset. No transacting with your disqualified persons. Always want to hire unaffiliated affiliated third parties to work on anything or to manage your real estate. And you're not using any of your assets personally. You're not vacationing in that lovely Airbnb on the beach. And of course, always consult with your CPA or legal counsel about a deal. You know, we went over what the consequences are. It's worth it to pay your legal counsel some money to make sure you're not doing this. So this is a great idea. Make a list of all the disqualified people in your life. You know, someone maybe you think that you may want to invest with, they might be on this list. So write down you, any business you own, your spouse, any business they own, all of your lineal ascendants, lineal descendants. So it just will be a great list to refer back to. You know, you have a deal going on. Check out your list. There are no one's involved. Great. Perfect. So you guys have access to our free trainings and these webinars all the time. We went over our network our website, our email. If anyone wants to take a screenshot of this.
if you guys aren't a client yet, set up a call. Solo401k.com slash consult. We'll do a little one-on-one, -on -one, a full 30 minutes. Go over, you know, any questions that you have. And for everyone, you could always email us at support at solo401k.com. Call us. Check out our website. Let's see if there's any questions. So the first question comes from Yun He. Can a sole proprietorship invest returns be counted as business income if this is your source of income? For example, rental income, flipped house income, or any other form of return for making contributions into the solo 401k, pre-tax, and Roth. So a little off topic, but um, so... No, Yanhi, um, only self-employment income can be contributed to the, the 401k. Investments and returns, those do not count towards contributions. Thank you, Yanhi. The next question comes from Peggy. Can my self-directed 401k loan money to a nonprofit if I sit on the board of the nonprofit? So great question, Peggy. Um, potentially, um, but that's that's where you'll want to talk to your legal counsel because there might be a conflict of interest. So double check, but there's a potential there that you may be able to. The next question comes from Tim. Would this be a prohibited transaction? Um, I 1031 a free and clear rental home into a one third interest in a 19 door unit. Then my solo 401k does an equity share loan to a non disqualified person to buy a two thirds interest in the property. So that does sound like it could potentially be prohibited. Um, we don't recommend partnering with your retirement plan. And of course, I know I'm going to say this a lot. You want to double check with your legal counsel, just like how I said in the beginning, especially on a topic like this. A lot of this is, is legal stuff. And we are your IRS plan document providers and so happy to do things like this. But remember, these details, these transactions, anything that could be prohibited, double check with your legal counsel. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. The next question comes from Russell. If the solo 401k happens to sign up for a credit card, as the offer, these offers are fairly frequent to me, this would be considered an extension of credit. To be clear, I've never signed up for one. Just get the offers all the time. Even when you open the bank account, they ask if you want to apply for a credit card, for a credit card, not a debit, but a credit card. Well, glad that you have not done that, Russell. So a retirement plan cannot have a credit card. So you're correct. This is an extension of credit personally guaranteed by you, which is prohibited. So such a great question. It's something we didn't even go over. So thank you so much, Russell. Um, perfect. Yep. No credit cards for your trust accounts, everyone. You can have debit cards, no credit, because there's a personal guarantee there. Thank you, Russell. So the next question comes from SJ. Let's see. 
Okay, so a group of us formed an IRA LLC to collectively invest in a fund. All of us in the group wired funds from our individual IRAs into the IRA LLC bank account. One of the members accidentally transferred $500 from a personal account to the IRA LLC bank account. Isn't this prohibited? How do we fix this? So, um, yes, Russell, um, SJ, excuse me, uh, that is prohibited. Um, if the LLC operating agreement lists the IRA as the member um, and not the individual, um, the way to in, uh, fix this is to engage an attorney. Um, so this could be a lot of trouble for the IRA. So you definitely want to talk to someone as soon as possible. The next question comes from Justin. Can you make a commercial loan with long-term or amortization period to a non-qualified person or company? Yes. And of course, run that by your CPA. But that sounds, that sounds fine. Thank you, Justin. So the next question comes from Patrick. Gerald's LLC is a 33% tenant in common on a multi-unit property. Susie's revocable living trust owns the other 67% of the multi-unit property. One, can Susie's IRA lend Gerard's LLC funds secured by a separate piece of real estate? Two, can Susie's husband's IRA lend Gerard's, Gerald's, excuse me, Gerald's LLC funds secured by a separate piece of real estate? Can Susie's son's IRA lend Gerald's LLC funds secured by a separate piece of real estate? That is a lot and a great scenario, of course. Um, so it seems like no to Susie's IRA lending to Gerald's LLC. Susie's husband's IRA and son's IRA may be possible, but this could be considered a step transaction if they really, um, let's see here. So if they're really involved in the deal at all, um, if you proceed with any of these scenarios, you want to confirm compliance, of course, with your tax professional. We're not your legal counsel. The next question comes from Tracy. Can I be the property manager for the solo 401k? rental property without taking a fee. Is this considered self-dealing? So it might be possible. So collecting checks, that could be okay. Um, you know, if you're just doing those kind of activities, it's the, you know, the white collar duties that are, those are okay. It's the blue collar duties that are no. So you're not, you're not working physically on the property. So Thank you, Tracy. The next question comes from Tim. All right, Tim, my solo 401k loans money to John to flip houses. Can my taxable account by 50% of a property with John at the same time, my solo 401k loans money to John to buy the other 50% as tenants in common. So um, we do not recommend tenant in common properties with your retirement plan. You know, there are some 
legal precedents here about this being a prohibited transaction. So you want to be careful with something like that. Great question. The next question comes from Deborah. We can take money out of our IRA banking account and claim it as a distribution on our taxes at the end of the year. Yes, Deborah, you can. And that is what you should be doing. If you're taking it out, make sure that you are claiming those distributions on your taxes. Thank you, Deborah. The next question comes from Justin. Is a live-in partner ever considered a spouse for purposes of IRS determining disqualified person status, assuming they file their taxes separately? Good question. Interesting, Justin. Um, so it depends on the common law marriage in your state. So if your domestic partner is legally recognized union, then they are most likely a disqualified person. If not, you should be okay. Of course, you guys know who to check. Check with your CPA or your legal counsel. So very good question, Justin. Thank you. The next question comes from Victoria. Can you use your solo 401k to put down as earnest money on a real estate syndication, the money would be returned at closing. I would not be a manager of the asset being purchased. So we don't recommend that. Um, if you want to invest in a syndication personally, then you're going to want to put down those funds personally. You know, you're never mixing retirement funds and personal funds. Keep it separate. If you're in a deal personally, your retirement funds your retirement plan is not in a deal. Thank you, Victoria. Tim, assume my solo 401k buys a 20 unit, unit apartment building. Can my solo 401k then sell 50% interest to a friend as a tenant in common who will 1031 exchange a rental home into his 50% interest. That sounds okay. Um, if that person isn't one of the disqualified people, so it could be possible. You'll want to double check that. Of course. Thank you, Tim. The next question comes from Philippe. Is there a statute of limitation for the 401k? So yes, generally three to seven years from the 5500EZ filing. If you've never filed that 5500EZ, then the statute of limitation um, clock is running. Is not running. I apologize. So then, no, um, no statute of limitation clock is running yet. So not until you file that. Thank you, Philippe. Lots of great questions. Just a reminder: this was this was an educational webinar. We are not here to provide that that legal information, but you guys had great questions. It's fun to see you all interact. As a reminder, let's go over those three ways to get help. Oh, it's not lending me resend it, but okay. Remember our network, solo401k.net. Check out our website solo401k.com. And then of course, our knowledge base at support.solo401k.com. Join us this coming upcoming Monday for our weekly Q&As. That's always at 
6 p.m. Eastern. Next week, we'll be doing another great webinar at 2 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. <laughs>